What is up guys? It's Sky and it's freaking Bespin. That means Sabotage, Walker Assault, Supremacy, Turning Point, and Cloud Cars. Bespin seems like the full blown expansion that people kind of wanted when Outer Rim came out. Now unfortunately my internet was really bad this morning and after waiting for a 3 hour patch to download I got on and I really couldn't have the best experience. So I'll reserve my review of Bespin for a later video. I was able to get on and try out Fighter Squadron a little bit through the lag and also I was able to fly the cloud cars around Cloud City. So my overall initial impression of the cloud cars is that they are kind of fun to pilot. They're extremely maneuverable. They're way more maneuverable than the X-Wing or the TIE Fighter. The thing absolutely turns on a dime and it kind of fills a weird niche because it's not extremely good at air to air combat as blasters have extremely low damage and especially if you're tailing your enemy that's turning you're really not going to be able to get any kind of damage on your enemy using your blasters you're pretty much relying on your lock on missile and another issue is that the cloud car has the concussion missile that the A-wing has and the problem with that is it doesn't I don't think it breaks the rebel fighter shields but an interesting thing about the Imperial Cloud Car is that it seems to shoot ion lasers. So its blasters, I think, will be able to take down shields, like for instance in Fighter Squadron. And then you can try to land a missile hit to do some damage. And even in Fighter Squadron, the Cloud Car is extremely hard to take down. You can pretty much keep turning and you avoid most blaster fire from A-Wings and X-Wings. And then just turn on your jammer or use your defensive maneuver to avoid missiles. The only issue with the cloud car is that it's really hard to secure kills and fighter squadron you're definitely going to want to pick up that refresh token because you need your missiles to come off cooldown ASAP because you're pretty much relying on them to get kills. It's, it's probably best for you to play a support role just hang out with some fellow TIE fighters or TIE interceptors and try, try to take down shields and that way the your teammates can get on kills and score points for your team in fighter squadron. But I wasn't really able to get score a lot of kills on my own with the Cloud Car and Fighter Squadron. And in addition to that, in regards to air-to-air -air combat and the Cloud Car on Cloud City, get ready for some rage-inducing moments because a lot of people that really are intimidated by turning battles are just going to try to fly through the buildings and try to get you to crash. And this is something that kind of irked me, especially in Battlefield. If you guys ever played Dawnbreaker, people will just fly through the buildings instead of just facing you up in a turning battle. But one big thing to note is that they completely got rid of the air radar. The enemy fighters no longer show up as dots on the radar. You can however see your fellow teammates on the ground. They show up as blue dots. And this is an interesting change and it really changes the game as far as dogfighting is concerned. And I tried out the vanilla playlist and it was the same there too. They took out the air radar there. But moving on in regards to air to ground combat with the cloud car. I think it's pretty pointless. The blasters don't really do a lot of damage. I can see it being useful if you're, say, taking out shield on the ground or something. But even with the ion lasers, I didn't find that I could do a lot of damage to ATSTs. And small arms fire on the ground really light you up. Like you can be taken out by an E3 in just a couple bursts. Which I guess is balanced. Sometimes it's kind of annoying when fighters just want to strafe you all day and there's nothing you can do about it. But as far as air to ground combat, and the cloud car goes you're gonna have to really pick your battles and you're gonna have to kinda stay back in your in your own team's area of map control and just kinda dip in real quick get a couple shots off and dip out and those ground kills don't really come that quickly it's not like the A-wing that has massive splash and you can take out like two or three infantry at a time in a single strafe run and also a lot of the objectives are indoors like all the supremacy objectives and turning point objectives are indoors so as of right now I don't really see a lot of usefulness for the cloud car in these uh in this playlist it seems like a lot of time you'll just be chasing someone around that wants to just fly through buildings and I swear that was a lag nothing to see here move along but back to what I was talking about you'll just be chasing people around pretty much all game and really not get much done even on Walker Assault during the third phase, just cloud cars will continue to spawn in. Honestly, cloud cars, to me right now, although I don't have a ton of playtime with them, and my opinion may change, but as of right now, they're more kind of something to toy around with and have fun with. Kind of like the speeder bikes, but they're not going to make a huge impact on how the game plays out. 
Which I guess is going to make some people happy because a lot, some people just can't be bothered to get in the air. And you'll see in this little clip just how maneuverable the cloud car is. It's pretty much just turning on a dime. And some of these turning battles can go on for a long time. And part of it was due to the lag. Couldn't quite get on these guys sixes fast enough but I mean all this time we're just kind of spinning around the air and getting nothing done. I feel like I would have been way more useful if I would just you know, pack my E11, got down there on the ground, and started pushing the objective. And I would say that the cloud car is a lot more useful if they could do damage to the walkers, like on the rebel side. But the rebels don't have ion lasers. They just have their regular red blaster cannons, and they don't do a lot of damage to ATSTs or ATATs. And that's a huge issue. And not only that, but like I said, in Supremacy and Turning Point, the objectives are indoors. Anyways, those are just my initial thoughts. They may change as I play the game more and I can get on the game without massive lag. Um, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching guys. Catch you later.